Alright, coming in at number 10, we have the deep space radio bursts. Mystery fast radio bursts were discovered in 2007. These bursts flash for a micro instant, but emit more energy than the sun does in 10,000 years. The high energy surges of long waves have been detected 18 times over the past 10 years, and one burst in 2012 recorded in Puerto Rico occurred numerous times in the same pattern. Okay, this is what it sounded like. After fierce debates and a lot of head scratching, the source of the sound was traced to a micro galaxy 3 billion light years away from Earth. A lot of theorists have concluded that the sound is a space signal from another world or a parallel universe looking to get in touch. In our ninth spot, we have the television. Posted on Reddit by user Spice Rack, he was trying to take a photo of his kittens when he caught a huge glitch on camera. They explained that they were trying to capture a photo of the hidden cat on the gray blanket. When he showed his friends, they're like, yo, dude, look at your TV. Turns out that the TV screen is showing a different image than its reflection in the mirror. Now, a lot of people tried to debunk this. He thought maybe he took the photo sideways with a professional camera, since cameras snap the photo from up to down. That could explain the change. But the poster verified that it was taken horizontally with an LG G5 with a 135 degree wide angle lens, hence why the door at the side looks a bit warped. He didn't use panorama, and no stitching was evolved, and it wasn't done intentionally. This was taken as a single shot. Quite weird, huh? What are the odds? Moving on to number eight, we have the disappearing motorists. No, this isn't proof of teleportation. They aren't driving into a portal and transporting somewhere miles away, although it certainly looks like that. I don't know about you, but when I first saw this video, I was mind blown. Like I really thought they were going to be driving off the road and into the water. Now, someone on Reddit has managed to debunk this one. Seems as if whoever is filming this is high up on a building looking down, and the water we see is actually just the top of a wet building. But the way it's angled makes it look like they're really going under a bridge and disappearing. Let me know if you see it now. In our seventh spot today, we have the Sky Glitch. Posted by Reddit user Grimsby545, they were headed to their friend's house when they legitimately saw the sky glitching and took a picture of the moment. Look at that! The sky didn't know if it was night or daytime. Now, I have seen the sunset, but I have never seen the sky do something like this. Now, some think that it's just a giant cloud blocking the sky. If it is, then that's one massive dark cloud. Like, it literally blocked the sun and majority of the sky. Either way, it looks like a glitch of the matrix where the nighttime sky didn't load completely. Moving on at number six, we have the broken bracelet. Now, this is probably one of the weirdest glitches in the matrix of all time. So Reddit user Miss MissMXSN posted on Reddit about how she found a bead from her bracelet on her floor while sweeping. She immediately thought, oh no, my bracelet broke, but it didn't. The bracelet still had 15 gems and 15 turtles on it, but all of a sudden she had this extra turtle bead. Plus, the bracelet was perfectly fine. Now, people immediately shared a number of different theories with her. One was that her bracelet broke and someone in her family bought a replacement one so that she wouldn't notice. Only problem with this is that she claims she never takes this bracelet off and it was bought while she was on vacation, so it's not just from a local store. Another person thought maybe the bead had a fine crack in it and it slipped off the string. But like she said, she always had 15 turtles on the bracelet, and that's how many she still had. Plus, upon inspection of the turtle bead, there were no cracks or flaws. So something glitched and she ended up with an extra bead. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cat dog. This is another video making its rounds on TikTok right now. Let me show it to you. So it appears as if the camera person's neighbor's dog is up on the roof. But you might be thinking, where is its body? Well, it looks like it's just peeking its head up onto the roof to see what's going on, right? Wrong. Let's see the full video. That's right, it's a cat, folks. The whole time, that was a cat. So this cat has a dog's face on its backside. How trippy and glitchy is that? That's a plot twist no one was expecting. In our fourth spot, we have the doubled up cars. Now, what are the odds of two of the exact same cars parking next to each other? And not 
in a dealership parking lot. Having the same make and model and color of the car being parked right next to you is pretty rare, right? Now, what are the odds of another set of identical cars being parked behind these identical cars? It's a very slim chance of this happening, but it happened in real life. So not only are the two blue Audis identical, but check the cars in the back as well. You got two identical Range Rovers back there. Someone out there really said, copy paste, copy paste. Coming in at number three, we have the Spawning Inn. Now this video is another one going viral on TikTok right now, and it's baffling a lot of people. But basically, a security camera caught a man appearing out of nowhere. Check it out. Is this evidence of a man using his teleportation skills? How on earth did he just spawn out of nowhere? Now, of course, he could have been hanging out of the side of the van or he jumped out while the van was still in motion. But if that was me and I jumped off of a moving van, I would have been like, whoa, you know, try and get my balance. But this guy was standing still, not off balance or anything. So let me know what you think. Did he jump out of a moving van and stick his landing? Or is he a teleporter? Or both. Coming in at number two, we have the triplets. Bus passengers were shocked when they got on a bus and saw three identical looking men sitting in a straight line and all asleep. These men are complete strangers, yet they somehow all got on the same bus, all sat behind each other, and all decided to take a wee snooze. I just can't get over the fact that these men aren't related. Like, the first two could definitely pass as twins. This is just weird. Like, what are the odds? And in our number one spot today, we have the crossword ladies. If you thought that last picture was crazy, wait until you take a look at this one. These ladies are complete strangers, yet they look like twins and they're both dressed identically. They both are rocking some black pants with the exact same patterned blouse. They have glasses on their face and they both have a pair of dark sunglasses on the top of their head. Not only that, but they both have a love for crosswords as they are both doing one. Like someone will look at this photo and think that it was set up, but no, these women are complete strangers. Again, literally somebody said, copy paste. At number 10, we have the Fermi Paradox. This theory has some holes, but it is still very interesting, so it was a perfect way to start out this list. We live in a universe that spans an unfathomable distance and has so many planets in them, you couldn't count them even if you were really good at counting. So, some of them are much older than ours, so that means that their life would be way more advanced. So why on earth have we never heard of any of these aliens? Why have they not come out of the stars to see us? Well, this could be because we have a government that is hiding them from us or it could be because we are in a simulated world and there's no benefit to simulating life on other planets that could mean that the processing power and whatever we're hooked up to just isn't strong enough we need to get a rig that is way better if we wanted some alien life to come in we've got to invest in a new like graphics card and stuff coming in at number nine we have the man from torrid were we sent a man from another parallel universe or did he arrive via some kind of portal or vortex our story here stems back to 1954 when a man was detained at the Japanese border after arriving on a plane from Europe to Hanada Airport. The man said he was on his third business trip to Japan that year and he had a wallet filled with a mixture of currencies seeming to verify his business traveller status. When he presented his passport, officials were absolutely baffled asking where he was from. Now, The man who primarily spoke French said, Torrid. Where is this mystery place? He showed his passport again and the stamps that supported his travels. The only thing is, nobody had ever heard of Torrid. The company he was travelling to said that they'd never heard of him and he was carrying a checkbook to a non-existent bank. When he was asked to point out Torrid on the map, he pointed to where Andorra is today and seemed confused and offended to be told that it's not a real country. He was detained in a hotel overnight while Japanese authorities decided what to do with him, but by morning morning, he disappeared. Did he accidentally walk through a portal to another universe? Maybe. Coming in at number 8, we have the Bernstein Bears Phenomena. Also called the Mandela Effect, the Bernstein Bears Phenomena claims to prove the existence of parallel universes with subtle differences. People vehemently claim that the Bernstein Bears were spelled with an E and not an A. And honestly, I for one absolutely thought that the Looney Tunes were the Looney Tunes until I watched a video on the phenomena last year, and now I'm straight up convinced that I'm living in the wrong universe as it is clearly Looney Tunes. They're cartoons. 
This new world doesn't make any sense. Some people out there are also adamant that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the late 1980s, which is more than just a slightly altered timeline. It's not just spellings here, this is a pretty major parallel universe event. Coming in at number 7, we have Deja Vu. Deja vu, a glitch in the matrix or a signal from a parallel universe. While both seem as likely as one another, it is thought by some that the weird moments where we feel like we've been or experienced something before are actually signals that something key is happening in our parallel lives. Not only do some people believe parallel universes exist side by side, some people think they interact with one another in some way. According to Dr. Michio Kaku, an American American futurist, deja vu occurs as a result of a person's ability to flip between universes. Others believe it is because we're vibrating in unison with the frequency of another universe that's parallel with our very own. Oh, I've gone cross eyed. Coming in at number 6, we have the Lost Beatles album. A parallel universe may have given our world a gift in the form of a Lost Beatles album, Everyday Chemistry. This story goes that in 2009, a man called James Richards found himself self accidentally in a parallel universe, as you do. Luckily there was also a person from another parallel universe there, a man named Jonas. Now Jonas was on a trans dimensional tourism trip from the other earth, and he told Richards that in his world, amongst other things, John Lennon was still alive and the Beatles never broke up. Richards then stole a copy of a later album never released by the band and returned with it to our earth. What did he do with one of the most sought after pieces of music from a non history that almost but never happened here? He uploaded it to the internet. Eagle eared fans were absolutely having none of it though. They said the album is comprised of clever mashups from all of the Beatles solo careers. Richards later said that even though in an alternate universe the Beatles hadn't broke up, that didn't mean their future music ideas disappeared. I'm not so sure about this one, but I would love to hear what Paul McCartney has to say about it. Paul, tell us, is it real? I guess you're living in another universe so you don't know, but I don't know. I feel like you'd be able to answer. Coming in at number 5, we have dreams. Could our dreams be signals from a parallel universe? Some say maybe. In a number of First Nations cultures in North and Central America, people believe that dreams allow us to walk planes in other dimensions. Their reasoning is that dreams take place in colour and can include all of their senses. They think that when you're in a dream, you are in another world, perhaps a world you already exist in if you're doing something strange in your dream, maybe it's a sign that actually you live a far stranger life somewhere else. Coming in at number 4, we have The Bruise. Anyone else here bruise like a peach? Just me? Me? And the universe. In 2010, along with a team of researchers, Stephen Feeney of the University College in London announced that he had discovered patterns in the radiation background left over from the Big Bang. Now, this seemed to suggest that our universe bumped into not one, not two, but four other universes and was left bruised. Okay, what is the plural of universes? Universe I? Universe I? Universe I. Also, from the bruising, further researchers in California think that it is clear that this leads to some kind of like bubble universe theory, which maybe I can get on board with. Maybe Men in Black got it right when they imagined us all as marbles in a big bag. Coming into number three, we have the cold spot. In 2004, astronomers found something that baffled them an unusually cold area of space. The area is 1.8 billion light years across and much colder than its surroundings. The area also contained 10 thousand less galaxies than in other areas of a similar size studied in space. A researcher from Durham University in the UK believed that the spot could be evidence of a multiverse. They said it seemed as if a parallel universe smashed into ours, affecting it like a car pile up on the motorway would, only they're calling it a cosmic shunt. They believe the impact was so vast it pushed energy out from a big region of space, therefore creating the cold spot. It's hard to get your head around, but that is what they I think. Coming in at number 2, we have City in the Sky. In October 2015, Chinese TV went wild when thousands of residents in two areas of the country reported seeing a huge floating city in the clouds. Puzzled onlookers saw skyscrapers in the clouds and believed that they were seeing a ghost city or the colliding of 
our reality with a parallel universe. The phenomenon occurred in both Guangdong and Jiangxi, with some believing it was the beginning of an alien invasion. The images were caught on camera for the world to see and promptly went viral across the rest of the globe. So, what on earth or above earth is going on? Well, even though it looks like a city in the clouds to you and me, apparently it is an optical illusion called Fata Morgana, which is a natural mirage. So, that is what a lot of scientists are saying anyway, but other people are convinced it's a sign of a parallel universe or even a window to another world. Finally, coming into number one, we have black holes. The theory of loop quantum gravity suggests that there is no point of singularity in a black hole, rather, there simply folds in the universe. Everything we know about quantum physics tells us that information is never lost, that energy can't be created or destroyed, so perhaps black holes don't suck and destroy. Maybe they suck and create. A lot of scientists are dabbling with the idea that black holes are indeed folds or portals to an older part of the universe. Professor Stephen Hawking gave a lecture in 2015 wherein he discussed how it may be possible to come out of the other side of a black hole. He said the hole would need to be large, and if it was rotating, it might have a passage to another universe. But you couldn't come back to our universe. Anyone want to take that one way trip? I don't know if I do. Starting off this countdown, we have the glitching cat. Either this cat is walking on an invisible treadmill or it was caught glitching. Recently, this video was uploaded to Reddit and it features a cat walking but staying perfectly in one place. So you might be thinking, aw, poor kitty, the ground must be slippery for them. And that's why it's having trouble walking. No, because a couple seconds into the video, a confused man walks by and the cat stops, turns to him, and then walks in his direction. But then it turns back and starts walking in the spot again. Is this a glitch in the matrix? Or should I say glitch in the meow tricks? <laughs> Sorry, I hate myself. <laughs> At number nine, we have the Mandela effect. You might have heard of this. This is where people misremember something from the past. Now, people misremembering things happens all the time. What's the big deal? But the Mandela effect is literally thousands of people remembering it a different way. It's called the Mandela effect because there are thousands of people, maybe even millions, who remember Nelson Mandela dying in the 80s. But he didn't die in the 80s. This dude lived until he was an old man. Or am I remembering it wrong? Are the other people right? The reason why this could be proof of a simulation is because these slight mistakes could show some sort of human error or a glitch in the system on the side of the people who are running the simulation. Someone sat down on the wrong button and was like, oh, I killed Nelson Mandela. I'm going to get written up for this for sure. God damn, that wasn't supposed to happen. At number eight, we have deja vu. If you haven't seen The Matrix, then what are you doing with your life? It's not only one of the most amazing movies that showcases what could happen if AI gets out of control, but it also is one of the greatest action movies of all all time and there's a fourth one coming so you need to catch up on everything. Now, The Matrix was one of the first movies to showcase the simulation idea and evidence of The Matrix or something changing in The Matrix was deja vu. If you saw something repeat itself, it meant that you were in the simulation and that things were about to get crazy. Now, how does this translate to the real world? What if The Matrix wasn't so much a movie but it was a message? What if the people outside of the simulation wanted us to figure it out? and see if any people would use the hints laid throughout the movie as a way to actually break free from this digital prison. There could be clues throughout that movie that showcase all the signs of us being in a world of ones and zeros. Either that I'm starting to look like Charlie from It Was Always Sunny with the strings and paper and I'm like eh. At number seven we have simulation loop. We are already starting to see what is called a simulation loop. We live in a simulated society. Many things we create are larger versions of smaller things. Planes are simulations of birds. Tanks are simulations of Beatles as we create what we think is better versions of what already exists. Now we could be getting close to a loop of creating a world which is more interesting than our own. Virtual reality has started to take the world by storm and in it we will build worlds that are far more superior to our own. Worlds where people can fly, everyone is rich, you don't get sick and everyone can res their buddy because they got the ray gun. Now some people theorize that we have done this before and we are currently living in a previously created simulation and we might be headed into a another loop in the near future and go into a simulation again. So it's like simulation on simulation, inception, in simulation. No, 
I'm not gonna work on that. I made that word up, I'm sorry. At number six, we have the double slit experiment. This was an experiment where you take a panel of copper plate with two slits in it and then you fire electrons at it to see how the electrons interact on the other side. Do they move through in waves or particles? The first time this experiment was performed, the electrons seemed as though they were moving through in particles. The scientists wanted to see this in action, so they set up a device to observe this. And when the electrons were under observation, they moved in waves. So they did the test again without the observation and they went back to particles, meaning that the electrons electrons would change how they interacted based on whether or not they were being observed. If this was a simulation, much like a video game, the processing power would increase on certain areas when you were looking at them, which would explain how this changed the electron activity. Obviously it's probably a lot smarter explanation than that, but I'm going with the simulation one because I am not smart. At number five, we have Elon Musk said so. Come on, you can't argue with this dude. He's one of the smartest, richest people around. If anyone knew we were in a simulation, it would be this guy. He probably sees the matrix all the time. He just doesn't want to freak us out by letting us know that there is a 100% chance we are in a simulation by letting us know that there's a 100% chance we are in a simulation. Also, if anyone was on the up and up on whether or not we are in a simulation, it would be billionaires. Not because they paid someone to figure it out, but because they clearly have cracked some sort of code and know how the world works and are doing something we don't understand. If you had that kind of knowledge, you would be able to get ahead in the game. But Elon has made the theory of a simulation world so popular, so is he our digital messiah, or is he just a little bit crazy and has a lot of money? At number four, we have that's why we have ghosts. Now this seems like I'm trying to explain a myth with a crazy explanation, but that is why you guys come here. We want to get a little crazy with our theories because that is way more fun. Just walking around in our own reality, we don't want to do that, jeez. But what if ghosts? and hauntings have nothing to do with ghosts, but they are glitchy parts of our own reality. Like a haunted house is just basically Fallout 76. Ghosts are floating around doing the T pose, freaking everyone out. Demons, werewolves, all that sort of spooky stuff that we've always heard about. Myths, monsters, and creatures that could all kill us. That's just DLC that the public didn't like and then they just patched it out. And number three, we have creative purpose theory. Why do we exist? Some people think it's to serve God. Other people think it's just to have fun. Other people think there is no purpose at all. That we just live and die to get farted out into the earth and never heard from again. But what if we had a much greater purpose? To create, to make something so smart and so interesting, we couldn't bear to compete with it. As we get closer and closer to making AI, it seems that a self-aware, learning, adapting intelligence that has the power of the internet in its mind would be too much for us to compete with. It would be a living god that we made and we should be pretty proud of ourselves for doing it. But what if that is our purpose? purpose to make a being that is all knowing and able to move through the universe, consume knowledge and become even more powerful all without needing to eat, sleep, procreate or even take breaks. What if we already did this and now we're living inside this endless machine and the only reason it keeps us alive in this falsified world is because it wants to keep learning from us. Well if that's the case download me some abs because it's almost beach season. At number two we have computer viruses for people. DNA is a type of code much like the code that makes up computers. So could a virus from a computer get into someone's DNA somehow? Most of you probably think that is impossible, but there was a group at the University of Washington who might prove you wrong. Now I want to start off by saying you can't get sick from a computer. The virus that got put into human DNA cannot affect people. Don't freak out. But in 2017 this group found out that you could put malware into a strand of DNA. It was a very interesting experiment and it might have worked because all of our DNA is actually code and we are actually made up of ones and zeros and nothing's real. Ah, go rob someone. Don't actually do that. And for our number one spot we have the Fibonacci sequence. This is gonna be some math stuff so if you guys aren't good at math don't worry because I suck at math too and I had to find a dumbed down explanation so I could understand it and I'm gonna be bringing you an even dumber version right out of my mouth. The Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers where the totals equal the numbers before added together. So starting with zero we have zero plus one equals one. One plus two equals three. Two plus three equals five. Three plus five equals eight and so on and so forth with the sequence looking like zero one one two 
2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, and it goes on like that forever. Now, what does this have to do with simulation? Well, this sequence shows up in a lot of math and also a lot of nature. Many plants and other natural forming things have perfect Fibonacci sequences inside of them, almost like they were programmed from a computer. This could just be the most efficient way to make life and cells are living math, or could we all be in an auto create version of life and that's how the world is built in a computer and it's just like boop, they hit a button and it makes everything. Mm -hmm.